I love you. Did y'all hear what I said? I love you. I, I forgot I love you. Y'all sitting in your living room right now watching this. I love you. I can't see you, but I love you. I got to say this to you because I want you to not just hear what I'm saying. As I just, Elder just said, I want you to listen to what I'm saying. I love you, but I got to set you free. Right. Got to do it. Let's do that now. Everybody say, Yeshua. Yeshua. A Mashiach. I just gave you a Hebrew phrase. Yeshua a Mashiach. Yeshua is the Hebrew version of the Greek word Jesus. And Mashiach is the Hebrew version of the Greek word Christos. The Greek word Christos is where we get the English word Christ from. But notice I just said Yeshua at Mashiach. Yeshua at Mashiach simply means Jesus, the Messiah. Y'all grabbing this? Now, it's so important to understand, brothers and sisters, that the article the is there. Yeshua Mashiach became Jesus Christos. What did I just say? Jesus Christos. Why Jesus? Because there was no J. Everybody say there was no J on this planet until the late 16th century. So if there was no J on this planet, then there could not have been a word Jesus. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So the proper pronunciation was Jesus Christos. Instead of Jesus the Christ, the translation became Jesus Christ, as though Christ was a last name. Now, as you've heard me say, the greatest expectation for the Christian, for the believer, is that Jesus Christos is going to return in the clouds one day and take us out of this mess we're in. And as a result of you thinking that somebody's going to come take you out of this mess, you're not trying to improve the mess. Because you're waiting for a deliverer. You're waiting for a savior. Many black folk have referred, reverted back to the waiting for Jesus now since they've been disappointed with Barack. <laughs> They thought he was going to do stuff that's not happening, so let's go back and wait on Jesus now. You see, brothers and sisters, this is some deep stuff because you got folk who honestly believe that because I've been redeemed and I've been washed in the what? Y'all got it? Y'all got it? Because I've been redeemed lamb that one day a trumpet is going to sound and we're going to be caught up well let me ask three questions everybody repeat these three questions after me and brothers and sisters as we ask these questions we mean no harm I want you to here's the first question everybody repeat after me is it possible now notice, I'm, I'm simply asking a question. Is it possible? No. Say that. Is it possible? Is it possible? Now, this is what I want you to ask those people that you are trying to reach. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Right. I don't want you to just hear the message now. I want you to, as Elder just so adequately said, I want you to listen so you can implement what you're hearing. Yeah. When you talk to people, don't just be insensitive to them. Possible. Repeat the rest of the question by saying that Jesus expected his messianic kingdom to be established on earth 
within his generation. Some of y'all saying no. Is it possible? That's all. Is it possible that he honestly expected his messianic kingdom? Now, of course, we know he didn't really expect anything. And why do we know that? Because he didn't exist, right? But again, we're, re we're, we're trying to reach those who are there on that level, who think he did, right? So let's talk to them on their level. That's the only way you can reach a person, brother. So listen, y'all, that's the mistake many of us are making. We are talking to people on a level that they are not on. And then we get upset with them when they're not understanding what we're saying. You have to go to the left. Imagine, you would have school teachers, we've got retired school teachers here, who had masters and working on their doctorates in education. And guess what's really deep about it? With that level of academia, Elder, what class, what grade level did you teach? 10 through 12. 10 through 12. Elder, what grade level did you teach? Early childhood education. Early childhood education. Elder Lucas? Third to eight. Third to eight. So these were like elementary <coughs> grade levels. And these are adults with degrees. And guess what, y'all? When they went into their classroom every day, they had to talk to the students on the level of the child. Y'all hear what I'm saying? They couldn't go in and speak to them on a master's level. You can't reach the children that way. Your job is to go to the level of your listener and provide the information necessary for them to move to the next level up. Am I making sense? That's what you have to do and freeing your family. That's what you have to do and freeing your loved ones. Okay, so you have to ask them questions without attacking them. Make them think. Is it possible? That's all I'm asking. Is it possible that Jesus honestly believed that his messianic kingdom was going to happen within his generation of the people he was talking to at that day? <clears throat> Second question. Ask them. Repeat after me. Is it possible, is it possible? that Jesus thought that the end of the world was imminent because of a fulfillment of prophecy. Did y'all get that question? Now I'm going to break all this down to you, but see, I want you to set the stage here. Didn't, is it possible the man honestly thought the end was imminent? Not coming 2,000 years later, but the word imminent means it's here. Third question I want you to ask when you're trying to reach people is, is it possible, repeat that, is it possible that what Christians teach, that what Christians is, teach is yet to come, yet to come has already happened? Already. Let's look at Luke, the 21st chapter, verse 31 and 32. Luke 21, verse 31 and 32. Now, we're going to be turning to a lot of scriptures here, so let's do this quickly, okay? What does it say? So likewise, you, when you shall, when you see things come to pass, yes, know you that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Listen to what he's saying. Likewise. When y'all see this stuff coming to pass, now the thing is, I've been telling you, how do you read the text? When you say these things, what things? Okay, well, the, the things that she's referring to are in previous verses. We'll cover that in a moment. When you see these things come to pass, it goes on to say, know you, I want you to know. This is what he's saying. I want you not think, not believe, not assume, I want you to know that the kingdom of God is what? Nigh at hand. Nigh. What is another word for nigh, y'all? Near. Thank you. The kingdom of God is near. It's at hand. So right off the bat, it's telling you 
that nigh or at hand means now. It ain't 2,000 years. It ain't 2010. It's not in 2012. What is that thing? December what? We got these folks that create things, think that everything gonna happen in 2012. You know, that, no, uh uh. It's now, not in 2000 something, now, not at hand. Go ahead, read. Verily I say unto you. Another word for verily is truly. In other words, I'm telling y'all this. Rest assured that what I'm saying to you, go ahead. This generation shall not pass away. What generation? This. Okay, now let me show y'all what we mess up here. And I want you to be able to show this to people you're trying to reach. We make the mistake of interpreting what's said from the perspective of the reader and not from the speaker. So when it says this generation, it's not talking about this generation of those of, of us reading it. It's talking about this generation of the speaker. The speaker is saying this generation. For example, if I was to say to y'all, this generation's crazy. Why would you think I'm talking about a generation that's going to read or watch this DVD 50 years from now? You follow what I'm saying? If, if you watch this DVD 100 years from today, and I say this generation's crazy, I'm not talking about that generation that's watching the DVD at that time. <clears throat> In like manner, it's not talking about the generation that's reading this at this time. It's talking about the generation to whom he was speaking at that time. This generation shall what? Not pass away. Uh-oh. Everybody say the people living at that time. Come on, talk to me. The people living at that time would not die until what he said happened. Now, notice what he says in verse 33. What does it say? Heaven and earth shall pass away. In other words, this is what he's saying, y'all. Heaven and earth will pass away before what I said doesn't happen. Got that? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, which I have spoken unto you, will not pass away. Now, he clearly says to his audience in no uncertain terms, then this is no casual remark. Incidentally, this same reported saying of solemn assurance is repeated identically. Turn to Matthew now, please. Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 34 and 35. Let me get my Bible up here too because I want to cover some more stuff in Matthew 24. Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 34 and 35. Would you read it, please? Verily I say unto you. Notice he says it again. Verily. Now, you guys making notes of these verses? Yes. Okay, because see, you got to be able to share this with people. Verily, I say unto you what? This generation shall not pass. This generation shall not pass until, go ahead. Till all these things be fulfilled. Till all these things be fulfilled. What does it say next? Heaven and earth shall pass away. It says it again, y'all. The sky will cease to exist. Mm -hmm. The earth will cease to exist before what I said to you does not come to pass. In other words, he's saying, y'all, you can take this to the bank. It's going to be a bounce check, though, I'm telling you now. If you try to take this to the bank, it's going to bounce. Now, since you're in Matthew 24, let's do some looking at what it says here, okay? Turn to the, um, let's see here. Look at, look at, look at, uh, let's go to verse 3. What does it say? 24 and 3. Yes, verse 3. Now, y'all follow this well. What does it say? And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives. Now, of course, who's he here? Jesus. Talk to me, y'all. Who's he? Jesus. Jesus, right? Sitting on the Mount of Olives. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, what happened? The disciples came unto him. The disciples came to him. Now, see, again, what is your, what is your platform of, 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 of base of operation here? You are talking to people who believe every word of what you're reading right now. 
You got what I'm saying? You are using their book. In fact, when you share with them, when you try to reach them, use their Bible. Don't use your Bible. Because, see, when you start showing them something, they're going to say, I want to see that in my Bible. Because right. right. something wrong with your Bible. So use their Bible, okay? Notice the third verse again. What does it say? The disciples came unto him privately. The disciples came unto him privately. Saying, tell us. Saying, tell us. Listen carefully, y'all. Tell us what? When shall these things be? When shall these things be? And what else? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? What shall be the sign of what? Thy coming. What shall be the sign of thy coming? And of the end of the world. And of the end of the world. So they was talking 2012 stuff back then. <laughs> You got what I'm saying? Folks have always been preoccupied with this end of the world mess. Every generation got another date that it's going to happen. Now, it says plainly, tell us, what's going to be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? What is it going to say? And Jesus answered and said unto them. Okay, y'all get ready because here's where it starts getting painful. It starts getting very painful. To those of you who are watching me right now, to those who are watching on the internet, I repeat to you, I am not trying to be insensitive. I am not trying to hurt you. I'm not trying to cause you pain. I'm simply showing you what the Bible says. You just... And Jesus answered and said unto them what? Take heed. That no man deceive you. Listen, people, I'm getting ready to ask y'all a question. Who was he talking to? His disciples. Who? His disciples. His disciples. He wasn't talking to you sitting in this room. <laughs> right. It clearly says, and his disciples came and asked him questions. And he said unto them, not to you. Right. Brother Witherspoon, he didn't say this to you. <laughs> Deacon McDonald, he didn't say it to you either. <laughs> no, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Long know he didn't say it to him. <laughs> T.D. Jace knows it too. Oh. Creflo Dollar knows it too. They already know what I'm saying. On, That's some deep stuff, man, and yet they stand up and Okay, let's, 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 go ahead. He said unto them what? For many shall No, no, you missed, you missed the part. Take heed. Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. Who is you in this verse? Thank you, say it again. The disciples. He wasn't saying, Brady, take heed, don't nobody deceive you. He wasn't talking to us. Talking to the disciples. He's saying to the disciples. And see, a lot of preachers today try to use this verse to say, you got to be kept by said, Don't let nobody deceive you. But I wasn't saying that to you. <laughs> He's talking to the disciples. He says to the disciples, now listen, y'all. James, Peter, Thomas. I want you guys to understand. Andrew, I want y'all to understand. I don't want you guys to be deceived. Are y'all grabbing this? Yes, now, what was he concerned about in this literature? What was he concerned about? Deceived about what, Minister Stewart? It says, for many shall come in my name. Uh-oh. Go ahead. Saying, I am Christ. Now, here's what preachers do today. You know the Bible said the folk gonna come along claiming to be Christ. Mm -hmm. Look at somebody next to you and say that is not what that says. <laughs> if you look at that verse carefully, it says, for many shall come in my name. Right? Uh -huh. Saying I am Christ. Saying I am Christ. Y'all still some of you still didn't catch it. It does not say many will come in my name claiming to be Christ. That's not what it says. 
What it says is many will come in my name or as my representatives saying that I am Christ. Mm, I've got it. You got it that time, huh? And do what? And shall deceive, and shall deceive many. Mm. I've already messed some folk up right there. Because according to Matthew 24, verse 5, it clearly says people are going to come along teaching that Jesus is Christ and deceive a lot of people. How many of y'all see that there? I repeat, it does not say many will come along claiming to be Christ. Subject for today, there will be no rapture. And Jesus is not coming back. Now, Minister Stewart is getting ready to read to you right now proof that there will be no rapture. Verily I say unto you. Verily I say unto you. This generation shall not pass. This generation, those of you who are listening to me say all this, will not die. Mm -hmm. Y'all will not die until what happens? Shall all these things be fulfilled? So everything I said be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Did y'all get this? Now, so so what does this mean? Now we haven't even finished going through other verses yet. What does it mean at this point? Already at this point, based on what we have already covered, according to the Bible, already at this point, it means that if the Bible is in fact true, grab what I'm saying, and this is what you say to those you're trying to reach, if the Bible is in fact true, then that means that everything you are looking for to happen has already happened. That means that he already came back in the clouds and the angels have already raptured his elect. The trumpet blew. Right? If the Bible is in fact true. It has already happened and so therefore Christians you are now wasting your time. 